This now begins lesson number 27 of Old Testament Survey. In this lesson, we will be covering the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel is the writer according to Ezekiel chapter 1 and verse 1. Now it came to pass in the 30th year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives by the river of Chabar, that the heavens were opened and I saw visions of God. And of course, the one speaking is Ezekiel. Therefore, Ezekiel is the writer. Now, concerning the authorship uh, of Ezekiel, uh, it's uh, completely him. Uh, he is submerged in his message that beyond his name, uh, there's little regarding him. Uh, there's very little known about Ezekiel, except that he was a priest and the son of Buzi, B-U-Z-I, according to chapter 1 and verse 3. Also, according to Ezekiel 24, 15 through 18, Ezekiel was married and also became a widower. Now, Ezekiel uh, records the activity during the exile in Babylonia, uh, that is Babylon, the land of the Chaldeans. His message during this time, and as you'll read the book of Ezekiel, is directed to his fellow captives and also to the Hebrews that were still at home in the land of uh, Palestine, as it is known, or the land of Canaan, uh, which is Israel. Now, quite often, Ezekiel is regarded as a stern, heartless individual as you go through and read the book of Ezekiel. He is said to be impersonal in his detachment from his hearers and is concerned only with the vindication of God's glory, even in the proclamation of mercy. Now, it must be understood that the name Ezekiel means he will be strengthened of God. So whatever is said about Ezekiel, it's because God gave him his strength. God gave them him the message and God gave Ezekiel his character to uh, preach what needed to be preached. Now, unlike Jeremiah, while Ezekiel's feelings do not come to the surface much in his writing, uh, to assert then that he lacked sympathy uh, goes beyond the evidence. Now, no radical um, assessment can be made uh, by the critics to sustain their theories that he was subject to seizures and afflicted with schizophrenic paranoia. And of course, that's what the Jew Jewish scholars and the Bible critics say about Ezekiel, was that he was a man like Muhammad. That is, that Muhammad was an epileptic given to seizures and was a schizophrenic maniac concerned with the murder and mayhem and rape of women. And uh, that's what many critics and Jewish scholars have said about Ezekiel is that because he lacked sympathy and preached a harsh judgmental message and he had a lot of um, wild antics that the Lord told him to uh, carry out as a sign to the Jews that he was somehow subject to uh, cataleptic uh, seizures afflicted with schizophrenic paranoia. Nothing can be farther from the truth. His symbolic actions that he uh, does and carries out on behalf of God and his visions that he received from God are not necessarily uh, different from other prophets who recorded what they saw and uh, what they did. Of course, uh, Jeremiah, uh, God had him do some pretty amazing things and uh, Daniel had to uh, see uh, some pretty wild things regarding his dreams. So the things that Ezekiel saw and the things that Ezekiel did are not outside the realm of possibility when God takes a man and shows him things that are to come. As I said, Ezekiel was taken captivity to Babylon around 597 BC and called to a prophetic service uh, five years later. He was a prophet for at least 22 years according to Ezekiel chapter 29 and verse 17. Now there are 48 chapters, 1,273 verses, and 39,401 words. The book of Ezekiel is divided into two main sections. Chapters 1 through 35 concern prophecies of Israel's judgment historically and prophetically. That is out into the future of uh, the tribulation and the great tribulation. Then chapters 36 through 48 concern the prophetical restoration of Israel, 
at the end of the tribulation and the millennial reign of Christ uh, at the second advent and then for a thousand years. The Jewish scholars and Bible critics uh, say that the book of Ezekiel is the most corrupt book in the canon of scripture and did their best to try to keep it out of uh, being included in the canon of scripture. This because it is said to be full of magic and mystical phenomena that cannot be understood and therefore cannot be true. Now this is nothing to be concerned with since the Bible says that God gives understanding by way of inspiration according to Job 32 and verse 8. And the Holy Spirit gives us understanding according to 1 Corinthians chapter number 2 uh, verses 9 through 16. And none of the scholars have uh, this light, this understanding, or this Spirit of God in them, according to Isaiah chapter 8 and verse number 20. The Jewish scholars and Bible critics are also critical of chapters 40 through 48, because it reveals the truth about a future Levitical priesthood that will offer up sacrifices and offerings in the millennium. The rabbis thought this is contrary to the Pentateuch, and the Bible critics agree with them, by saying that there are no more sacrifices because they have been done away after Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, according to Hebrews chapter 10. But failing to rightly divide, and by changing the words in the verse, they miss the truth of Colossians chapter 2 and verse number 17. Now both groups to whom Ezekiel preaches to, that is those that are in exile in Babylon, and also the Hebrew people that are uh, scattered throughout uh, Israel, uh, both groups remain obstinate and impenitent even after the capture of Jerusalem by King Nebuchadnezzar and the exile of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, together with a large segment of the population. So God calls Ezekiel and assigns him the task of denouncing the rebellious house of Israel and has him foretell of the destruction of Jerusalem and the deportation of a great numbers. Now, six years after Ezekiel begins to preach, his words do come true. In 586 BC, Nebuchadnezzar destroys Jerusalem and brought all but just a few survivors to Babylon. Now, Israel's unfaithfulness does not exhaust God's mercy. Ezekiel is also directed by God to proclaim the gospel or the good news that the exile would end and that Israel would be restored to her position as the instrument of God's salvation to all men. Of course, this has not come to full fruition yet. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 that blindness in part happened to Israel, uh, but God is going to deliver them. God's going to save them at the end of the tribulation. That's found in Romans uh, chapter number 11. Now the manner in which the book of Ezekiel presents the message of judgment and promise distinguishes it from all other prophetical books of the Old Testament. It is first unique in that it has a systematic arrangement of the contents in the book of Ezekiel. Dividing the blocks of threat and promise to Israel, there is a series of addresses to foreign nations which have a double aspect. They pronounce doom upon the wicked neighbors of Israel. And those are the ones that are still threatening Israel today. All your Muslim countries that surround uh, Israel, uh, God's going to destroy them. But the destruction of Israel's enemies also constitutes assurance that they will not be able to hinder the fulfillment of God's promise to redeem and restore his chosen people. So while God's going to destroy the enemies, God's also going to uh, save Israel. And in the process, God's going to put Israel uh, in the fire of affliction. Now another unique feature about the book of Ezekiel is the form in which both threat and promise are expressed. It abounds in mysterious visions, daring allegories, and what I would consider some weird symbolic actions. Like asking Ezekiel to lay on his left side for a number of days, and then asking him to lie on his right side for uh, so many days, and then when he's finished, go ahead and cook some bread with wheat, barley, and beans, and lentils, and millet, and fitches, and cook the bread with man's dung. Uh, that's a peculiar request made by God to Ezekiel. Uh, 
which Ezekiel gets God to change his mind. And instead of using man's dung, he's able to use cow's dung. You can read that in chapter number four. And then in chapter number five, you have the barber shop of Ezekiel shows up. And God told Ezekiel to take a barber's razor and pass it upon his beard and upon his hair and cut it off and then weigh it out and then divide it and then he wants ezekiel to burn a part of it and then he wants ezekiel to uh, take a part of it and chop it up with a knife and then take a part of it and scatter it uh, to the wind and that's in ezekiel chapter number five just a couple of odd things that ezekiel has to do being god's messenger and minister the visions in particular are bizarre and almost grotesque in form. Therefore, they are very difficult to interpret. And the Bible says that the uh, interpretations, they belong to God. We are of no private interpretation. So if you're going to interpret the book of Ezekiel, it has to be done line upon line, precept upon precept, here little, there little, with the guiding light that the Holy Spirit gives to understand the thing. And just because you can't understand it, you can't do what the Bible critics and the Jewish scholars have done, and that is try to throw it out and pretend it doesn't belong. The basic meaning of the book of Ezekiel uh, does not elude the reader if he keeps in mind that God's glory and his great acts of judgment and salvation are portrayed in symbolic language and form. Now, when I say salvation, that isn't necessarily always salvation of a man's soul in the New Testament but rather salvation of the nation of Israel. That's the primary um, doctrine that you're dealing with in the book of Ezekiel is the salvation of a nation rather than the salvation of a man's soul. Although you can find types and metaphors and similes in Ezekiel to that of the New Testament Christian um, being saved by God. Now, what Ezekiel sees in visions describes in allegories and acts out in a manner resembling charades is designed to contribute to the assurance that God is carrying forward his plan of salvation. Now his plan of salvation is initiated and is confirmed by the covenants that God made with Israel uh, centuries ago through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now Israel, purified by God's judgment in the Babylonian exile, Israel will again become the bearer of the promises to be fulfilled in the new covenant. All of what Ezekiel sees in prophetic perspective is uh, scenes of the immediate and distant future are sometimes superimposed on the same picture of the coming and enduring kingdom of God. And of course, the kingdom of God is both literal and spiritual. It uh, is now in spirit form because the kingdom of God is within. And uh, when the millennial reign happens, you're going to have the kingdom of heaven on earth and the kingdom of God both present at the same time. So that's an overview, a survey of the book of Ezekiel, what Ezekiel sees by way of visions and what God has him act out that shows the impending doom of Israel and the nation surrounding it, as well as the prophetical restoration of Israel and the destruction of the nations who uh, persecute Israel from now through the great tribulation. All right, now for an outline of what you'll read in the 48 chapters of Ezekiel. First of all, Israel is a rebellious house that will fall. This is found in chapter 1 through chapter 24. Now God sends Ezekiel as his spokesman to the rebellious house, chapter 1 through chapter 3. The first series of symbolic actions and their tragic meanings are found in chapters 4 through chapter 7. The vision of Israel's doom is found in chapter 8 through chapter 11. In that group there, in that section, those chapters, you'll find idolaters in the temple, chapter 8. And that's a wild uh, section right there, Ezekiel chapter 8, where you have him digging in a hole in the wall and looking and seeing some real twisted things going on in a temple all right then also in chapters 9 through 11 you you read about the judgment that is to fall upon jerusalem for her idolatry the second series of symbolic actions and words of doom are found in chapters 12 through chapter 14. you have parables of doom in chapters 15 through chapters 19. 
the third series of rebukes and threat because of Israel's total disobedience are found in chapters 20 through chapters 20 through chapter 22. The two final parables and the last symbolic action of doom is given in chapters 23 and 24. And the news of the fall of the rebellious house of Israel is found in chapter 24 verses 25 through 27. Now the foreign nations, the nations that surround Israel, are guilty of their crimes against God and his people, and for this they will be destroyed. This can be found in chapters 25 through 32. The word of the Lord concerning six Palestinian neighbors of Israel that are Ammon, Moab, Edom, Philistia, Tyre, and Sidon are given in chapters 25 through 28. And there are seven words of the Lord concerning the seventh nation, which is the nation of Egypt, in chapters 29 through 32. Now Israel will be chastened and then restored. God's kingdom will flourish. You'll see this in chapters 33 through 48 primarily 36 through 48. There is a prophetic restoration on the basis of God's message in chapter 33. You have the news of the fall of Jerusalem that arrives in chapter 33, verses 21 through 33. The promises of Israel's restoration, chapters 34 through 39. The restoration of Israel under an eternal king in chapter 34. Restoration on the hills of Israel, chapter 35. Restoration of a heart of flesh, chapter 36. Restoration to life, chapter 37, verses 1 to 14. Restoration to unity, chapter 37, verses 15 through 28. And restoration to safety from all evil, chapter 38 and 39. Then lastly, you have the vision, the vision of restoration. This is the millennial kingdom in chapters 40 through 48. First of all, the temple of the restored people is given in chapter 40 through 42. The glory of the Lord enters that temple, chapter 43. Worship of the restored people is given in chapters 43 through 46. And the promised land of the future inheritance to the tribes of Israel are given in chapters 47 and 48. So there you have the survey to the book of Ezekiel. You have an outline of the book of Ezekiel. You'll have some uh, wild events, visions, uh, dreams, metaphors, symbolic actions uh, given in the book of Ezekiel. Those last eight chapters are all about the coming millennial temple where Christ will rule and reign. There you'll see David come back to comes back to life and he's... Uh, there ruling and reigning with Christ as the principal ruler. Uh, you'll have in the last chapter of uh, Ezekiel chapter 48, uh, you have a interesting thing there. The name of the city from that day shall be the Lord is there. So the Lord is there is the name of the millennial temple. And remember that when Jesus Christ came the first time, his name was Emmanuel, God with us. Of course, they crucified him. Uh, so he left and went back to glory. But when he comes back the second time and rules and reigns for a thousand years, it'll be just like God with us. It'll be the Lord is there uh, sitting in his temple. All right, that's the book of Ezekiel. Uh, next time we'll cover the book of, of uh, Daniel. May God bless.